Oh, I just wanted to say, I think it's Grey Ball. Ooh, do we still get another quest for him? Grey Ball looks as pleased as a cat that's brought a mouse to his owner. You know, Commander, I've just made a curious discovery. I've a habit of walking around the fortress every once in a while to make sure it's secure. I keep an eye out for any weak spots or vulnerabilities. Well, on my last security spot, I decided to inspect the Warden's keys. I put something on one of them. It produces a tiny ball of some yellowish substance. Wax. Mr. Evans complained that this key had been sticking recently, and no wonder. Someone took a wax mod of this key, but they didn't remove all of the wax. Some of it probably got into the lock, but guess which door this key opens. Probably our room? I'll give you a hint. There's only one other copy of this keg, of this key, <laughs> and it's hanging from your belt because of the key to your personal chambers. Ha! It seems that, I, that someone wanted to get inside without permission. Either you have a mysterious admirer lying in ambush beside your bed, or you're being hunted by an assassin. They've managed to get quite close to their target, so they clearly have skills, even if they are a bit scared, careless. Oh, I think it's the first time I actively see a devil mythic path, which would be You've worked for me so long, yet our contract was only verbal. Before we continue, I'd like to formalize our relationship. Shall we negotiate a written agreement? <laughs> nice. <laughs> what a devil thing to do. So, what makes you so sure we're dealing with an assassin? I did, a brief, I did briefly consider the possibility that it could be a thieving servant. However, I doubt anyone in Dresden would be brave enough to rob you. The only other explanation is that someone wants you dead. So, Wax, a lock, my death, what are you talking about, Graeber? Uh, it's simple. The key is placed in Wax to make an exact imprint, and then the imprint is used to craft a working copy. It's quick and convenient. Most importantly, no one will notice that the key is missing, because it only takes a few moments to make the imprint. There's only one downside to this approach. Wax, wax is quite sticky, and it seems that the assassin was in a great hurry. He did not have enough time to wipe off the key properly. Any idea who's behind the attempt of my life? Unfortunately, I do not know the identity of the client, but the fact that your enemy found their way inside the fortress and managed to get this close to you makes me think that you are being hunted by true professional. There's a high likelihood that they're a member of a guild. Hmm, so what do you think I should do? Abel smiles grimly. I think you should let your enemies try. The agents have already infiltrated our ranks, so it will be a difficult so it will be difficult to prevent an attack. They'll make an attempt on your life sooner or later. Don't let your guard down. Don't walk around unarmed. Don't stand near windows. Don't eat fresh fruits and vegetables. And only drink spring water that has been collected by one of your most trusted allies. I can almost hear Ivan in the background. What? No cookies? <laughs> I doubt the assassin will wait long. The attempt on your life will likely happen on the first night you spend in your chambers. Keep your weapon at the ready, and I will, with your consent, stand guard outside your room without drawing attention. Do I have your permission? I mean, not that I suspect that, but if Graver wanted to kill us, <laughs> that would be the perfect opportunity. Who could it be? I, I kinda... Is it the sneaky attempt of just Wolchev to get a key? You know, I think you're right, so it would be great if you could guard my chambers. You've made the right decision. Find a good hiding place near your chambers. I don't want to scare anyone away. Did you see that? The quest is called, is called the price of loyalty. Hmm. Captain Odin. Come on up. Though you were once again victorious in your last encounter with Cora Masada, I'm worried. I've been interrogating the prisoners, and some interesting information came to light. It seems Cora Masada intends to fundamentally alter strategy and be on the defensive next time we fight. That is uncharistic of him. Indeed, it's uncharistic of demons generally. For the most part, they prefer a ruthless onslaught. Our enemy seeks to counter us with a robust formation. 
overwhelm us with ranged assaults and grind our attacks to dust one after another. Opposing demons who fight defensively is unknown territory, and we must be prepared for it. I suggest we train our infantry in ways of withstanding enemy shots, which should secure our victory in a ranged duel. Ha! <laughs> what is this I'm hearing? The demons are afraid and want to fight on the defensive? Perfect. Let them stand there and wait while our cavalry mows them down. The demons intend to fight in a disciplined manner, a plan destined for failure. We will send our infantry out to meet them and then see who blinks first and attacks. Once they have a good grip on our infantry's throat, we will surround their entire force and crush it. Ah, huh. so the demons have decided to play with us. Well, they don't know who they're dealing with. Give me, let's see, oh, even a few daring riders. And I'll put the kibosh on this Karamazada. I always say this demon's name differently. Well, our strategy, no matter how great a general he is. We've got the foul beasts scared again, huh? They are right to be scared, but it's not enough. And a minimum that dug in, caught on the defense in an unfamiliar land, they are sitting ducks. We approach them, from, an, from any direction, and we pick them apart, piece by piece. I think I actually have really no opinion on that. So let's listen to our love, Ulrich. Ulrich, let's employ your tactic of wearing them down. We once used this idea to take them down a whole troop of giants. The Oglins here stand even less of a chance. Thank you for your time, Commander. I will get to briefing the officers on our new strategy once. Once all the preparations are finished, I'll be at your disposal again. Right. See if there's anything else we can do with the crusade. I mean, we have the things from Rilu. Secret research. We have it. A really ballish draft. A large pile of unsorted notes, drafts, and sketches of various arcane rituals. Meta researchers could potentially glean something useful from this material. Yeah, we kind of have it twice for whatever reason. Let's also do the mount training and the glory to the heroes. And I think I will just take the time to speed this up. But first, we're going to sleep. Right, let's sleep and hope we don't get killed. Interesting. Can sneak out of his timbers past me. Who is that? That's a crusader, I think. We're gonna rest after this and here's the unwelcome intruder. Lone assassin. Hit time zero. Damn you! Hmm. Sneak attack. The assassin lies on the floor, spluttering and gasping for breath. He reaches out feebly for a sword but to no avail. There's nothing personal, my dear colleague. I still don't do anything stupid, and we let you die with dignity. Don't execute him just, Commander, just yet, Commander. This lesson could prove useful. He might be a valuable source of information. So, are you ready to answer my questions, assassin? Piss off. Didn't have said that. I'll have to make you bleed. A pity. I'm wearing my new gloves today, and I don't want to ruin them. That was almost Darren's voice. Ah, Logan would despise torture, so let's try it with diplomacy. You know, if you want to survive, you better start talking. The failed assassin shakes his head in disbelief. There's a flick of hope in his eyes. He remains silent for a moment, and then nods resignedly. Ask your questions. 
I'll tell you everything. So, who are you? I'm Loxa Dowley from Galt. I joined the Crusaders eight years ago, but I used to be an investigator. When I lived in Galt, I served the Cabinet of Skulls, our nation's ruling council. I hunted down our enemies, plutocrats, foreign spies, traitors of the revolution. I served my homeland as best as I could. And then? Then there was a coup. Citizen Goss seized control of, gay, of gold. The scoundrel formed the Revolutionary Council and accused the old regime of betraying the nation. They began to hunt down people like me. Well, the Great Gardeners found me. The Great Gardeners. Interesting name. They were official guard of the, the Gelton Revolution and its most bloodthirsty executioners. They said if I confessed publicly and told every, everyone about the crimes committed by the Cabinet of Skulls, they would spare my life. If I refused, I would be executed, along with my family. They were good at their jobs, those pigs. I could either rot in prison or sentence my family to death. So I signed everything they asked of me. That's a lot of explanation. They locked me up in the dungeons, but then someone made me an offer. I don't know who they were, but they must have been important connections among Gal's political and social elite. They told me that they would give me my freedom, if I worked for them. They didn't tell me the exact nature of the work, but I could guess. If they wanted me, it probably meant they needed someone to do that dirty work. Sasson chuckles grimly. I agreed, and the next day I was sent to Mendev an escort. The official story was the nation had granted me a chance to atone for my crimes, and that I would have to the right to return to my homeland after 20 years of exemplary service. My employers have only reached out to me twice since then. For the first time, I had to take care of an overly eager inquisitor in Canavri who was poking around in the Tower of Estrid. For the second time, I received an order to kill you. Ibar chuckles appreciatively. They clearly know how to recruit and manage a large network of agents. They found an expert, rescued him from the deadly dungeons of gold, and then placed him in Mendev under cover until they needed him. And they've only used him twice in eight years. They must have plenty of other agents at their disposal. <clears throat> Why did you try to kill me? I received a letter. I was promised a large amount of gold for your hat. This lesson loses his composure. You can hear the rising panic in his voice. And I have panic. Uh, I know I have panic. And I have family back in gold. D do you know what it's like living in fear that you'll be taken away? You never know when they'll come for you. Anyone can be accused of treachery wrong against the revolution, associating with the nation's enemies, or having disloyal thoughts. I, I wanted to get out of there. I wanted a peaceful life to live, so I agreed. Yes, it was for the money, so what if you disapprove? I don't care. My friend, if I disapprove too much, you don't get out of here. You should care. Who hired you? I don't know. I was contacted anonymously, and I was instructed to destroy the letters upon receiving them. The only names they gave me were the names of my victims. So, after you killed me, were you supposed to meet them in a specific location to get paid or something? Yes, a place on the high road that leads west from Dresden. It's called the Dry Crossroads. It's a quiet, inconspicuous spot. Graber nods. I know the place. We need to flush them out of hiding and finish off the remaining assassins. And it should probably be just the two of us, Commander. The more people we bring with us, the less chance we have of taking them by surprise. Rainbow star stares coldly at the captured assassin. His voice is like steel. We don't need this one anymore. I mean, don't underestimate the power of surprise, but it sounds kind dangerous. Like, uh, just us two? <laughs> Can't imprison him, we can just go either to you are free or we sentence you to death. And he's not repentant or anything, so I think Logan would have gone and be like, okay, we imprison you. Yeah. I hereby sentence you to death. You end the life of the traitorous scoundrel with one swift, clean blow. Let's hope the rest of the long rest is nice. I've tried to cross 
almost an entire continent, but I've never met a mongrel until you. But I've heard about similar beings that appeared in other parts of the world as a result of other cataclysms, not just the world wound. Really? So we're not only the so we're not the only lucky ones then. I didn't know that. Nobody in our tribes knows either, it seems. Interesting, so not only demonic mongrels. Alrighty. Yeah, let's let the crusade stuff rest. And let's do the very dangerous mission of just going with Graver. God, he's like such a bad idea. Oh boy. But let's just quickly level him up. Yeah. I. Okay, I think something's broken. Slow. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> Did you see just the arrows moving? <laughs> oh, Pathfinder. Always new bugs with new patches. I still love you. Beautiful. I just hope that we don't have to do the whole assassin thing again. Quests. Price of loyalty. Yeah. We have to skip through that again. Great. But I mean, without me reading everything aloud, it's quick. I mean, wouldn't wouldn't one of the best defense mechanisms be that we just um, use a mimic here? I mean, the mimics are on our side, are they not? Uh, good. Who are you? Doop, doop, doop. Okay, uh, we go for the lawful thing. Here we are. Well, you had this rest. funny look on your face back in Canabras when you were watching the poor little kids whose houses had been burnt to cinders. Were you missing the days when you weren't weighed down with armor? Back when you didn't take orders from nobody? I do get sad sometimes when I see little kids and remember my childhood. Not because I miss the freedom of running wild in the slums, but because I remember my life before then. Before I became an orphan. Mm. Okay, let's quick save, <laughs> just in case it bugs around again. Maybe let's also do the... Ah, the problem is somehow the level up. Hmm. Weird. Also not very handy. Oh, you want to level up someone? Game crash. Yeah, I mean, with the other bugs from the patch, the fights are so easy that maybe we don't need to level them up. So let's just try it without it. Beautiful. Right. Skates. A gray ball. Ah. Rainbow always looks so sincere. I do wonder the things he just does for fun or winding down. Ah, we are heavily encumbered and everything. Great. Okay, let's rest on the road. Rainbow, old boy. Who have you got yourself tangled up in this time? The way you're going, soon you'll be a dyed-in-the-wool crusader, singing hymns and giving alms to the poor. Oh no, how and horrible. Even, oh gods, the thought makes me shudder. Killing for free. <laughs> okay. 
Oh no, we're doing something not for money. <laughs> the bugs balance each other out. That is really weird. How do they manage to get in so many bugs every time there's a major update? Oh well. Let's just hope it works. Hey, we have Ivu. The two of us should go on from here, Commander. If we descend in a crowd, we scare them off. At least we can have Ivu. One's coming. One of ours, I think. No, it's not. The Commander's here. Two arms. Orzala. Ah, great. We got you into the position. We helped you. And now you're betraying us? This is the first time you've seen Horsela in prison in person. She looks at you in surprise, and you can see her displeasure. What are you doing here? Oh, are you expecting someone else? Well then, you should have hired someone more competent. The pathetic fool didn't stand a chance. You're right. I need the services of a professional. If you kill this mortal, I grant your place in my guild. In the abyss of you, I keep my word. Nice! So I think this is a point where Graver could also quite easily turn on you. Not on Graver's sincere loyalty, a person must be an equally skilled killer who shares his cynical views on life, basing a low price on the lives of others, prizing gold and freedom. I think we kind of manage with the freedom part. I thought we got along well. Why do you want me dead? Zola's voice rises triumphantly. Father will see how wrong he was about me. Why do all of Baphomet's children have daddy issues? Well, maybe because of Baphomet. He reward me with his favor when I present him with your hat. I'll be the greatest of Baphomet's daughters once more, and that half model Absat Borlish will crawl on her knees before me. I root the, the armies of Elishinira, then I'll cut down the Skari's lackeys and take his army for myself. And once that's done, it'll be your turn, Crusaders. I'll make you kneel before the Lord of Beasts. Well, it's very brave of you to be in person. I applaud your courage. I want you to personally witness your demise. Ozala snaps angrily. Do you think I'm scared of you? <laughs> You have no idea how powerful I am. Hepsimira was nothing compared to me. And now, my father has freed me from that cursed seals. I am no longer bound. I am Baphomet's daughter, the strongest of his offspring. I've reclaimed my rightful place. And now, I will destroy you. Ah. <sighs> we already killed other daughters of Baphomet, so... Oh, there's a trickster option. You've got me. Oh no, I am disgraced. How can I bring myself to look for us man in the eye after this? <laughs> awesome. You know, I think you've lured the wrong beast into your trap. I guess the one dying is not me. You. These amateurs think too highly of themselves. It's time for them to see a professional at work. Sweet dreams, everyone. Let's make this quick. Well, oh, thanks, Patch. This won't be a hard fight. Because I think otherwise it could have been with just two against three. Zalas curls up on the ground in anguish. She slams her fist down angrily. This isn't how it was supposed to end. Why? Why are you so damn strong, mortal? And you, shorty, you foul little worm. You've ruined everything. So especially if Graver turns on you, and then it's four against one. Graver smirks beneath his beard. Now why would you say such a horrible thing, Horsela? Don't you know that words can cut as deep as a blade? Logan goes in and kills Horsela. You shouldn't have come after me. 
on earth writhes on the ground and howls hysterically. I hate you! How I hate you all! It's quite similar to what Hafsimura said. Also maybe a Baphomet child thing. Hating stuff. I think we're done here. One of these nights, we should meet up at the tavern to celebrate. Brings on me. Well, I think that definitely was an achievement. We killed the leader of the... of the Assassin's Guild twice, so I think that's something. Right, break the resin and let's go for a beer or some wine. What do you think does... does he drink? Gray bar. Whiskey? Interesting that we got another uh, quest after going to it's another companion quest. Hey Graybar, I think you're do. back here. Ah. Ooh, it's voiced. Is that the commander who entered the lair of assassins unafraid, wreaking havoc and personally murdering everyone in sight? <laughs> Why yes, I think it is him. Well, beer is on me today, just like I promised. By the way, Logan is definitely a character who does, like, finger guns all the time. <laughs> Raybug greets you loudly, puffing on his pipe, as usual. Well, can I expect more attempts on my life? Of course, but... He no longer has weapons like Horsala's Assassin's Guild at his command. And the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth are no match for them. I don't think you need to be wary of any more attacks. He's really best at Baphomet. Mm, yeah, I think whiskey fits bourbon or some such. Yeah, true, definitely. So, I mean... Just talking with you alone here, have you ever been tempted to betray me? The well, dwarf smirks. Maybe a little, perhaps. Oh. But I never violate the terms of my contracts. Justice, villainy, loyalty, treachery... All these words carry no meaning for me anymore, but my reputation. For that, I will put my life on the line. Well, I would say that's like the definition of lawful neutral. <laughs> not cause it's wrong, not cause I like you, but cause it was my word. You know, you can say whatever you want, but in truth, you have a faithful and noble heart. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm a scoundrel with a heart of gold, a noble murderer, and anything else you come up with. Mm. Just don't try to make a paladin out of me, Commander. Challenge accepted. Which deity do we want for that? Well, definitely thank you for remaining loyal to me. It's not about loyalty. It's just business, and... But perhaps you are right about that. I like you. I rarely Aww. say that to people, and almost never to my employers. But here we are. And it's hopefully not just the alcohol speaking. I enjoy traveling with you. And I would have felt regret if you had died. Apparently our adventures together have made me overly sentimental. Or maybe you just have emotions and just don't want to admit that at times. Sorry for kicking my mouse. You know, have you ever thought about what you're going to do, well, when this war is over? I'll remain a drifter and a killer. Nothing will change. Mm. There's an undercurrent of sadness be beneath Graber's bravado. I mean, you can change it. Well, have you ever thought about quitting the assassination business? Maybe I have, and maybe I haven't. Uh -huh. Have you ever noticed how I wish That's all a my yes, by the way. sweet dreams? It's a handy catchphrase that I've been using for many years. A farewell to someone I'm about to snuff out. I've been thinking about it a lot recently. Am I actually wishing myself sweet dreams? 
preparing to go to my eternal rest every time I go into a fight. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. There's more to life than killing, my friend, or dying yourself. Anyway, fortune oh doesn't favor those who think too much about tomorrow instead of living in the present. Right now, I'm fighting the world wound under your command. As for what happens next, we'll just have to see. Concern. You know, you do have a daughter. Yes, my little Mora. Do you think she would want to see me again after all these years? What would she think of me if I told her how I had been earning my bread all this time? That I left her to do this kind of work? I'm afraid to hear the answers. I only hope that she will be able to forgive me if I ever get the chance to see her again. Well, you know if you ask her, right? You know, after we win the war, I think that's also very patronizing, isn't it? <laughs> ah, come on. After we win the war, I think you should retire and go find your family, and then decide what's next. Maybe you are right. Every road eventually comes to an end, and I've been treading this path for quite a long time. Fine. Let us have one more go at defeating some indomitable evil. And then I'll go into retirement. <laughs> that was easier than expected. Oh. You know, just know that I think highly of you. Same goes for you. I never regretted getting involved with you. Even though the whole thing seemed like a utter failure at times. Raybo narrows his eyes, gives a thin smile. Well, I'm definitely glad we had this talk. What an awkward way to end a dialogue. You know, Commander. You know. I've always thought that I was a loner by nature. I don't like people. I don't give a damn about them. They don't give a damn about me. And that's how it's always been. Until I met you. Are an exception to all the rules. It is completely wrong for a hired blade to have any kind of personal affection for a client, but I do. Whatever lies ahead, I will never regret going on that dragon hunting mission with you. Oh, you know, Grapo, maybe you just need a friend. You can also stay around. <sighs> Surprised to hear such words from an assassin, Commander. His face is bright red. Aww. <laughs> he smooths down his beard, takes a long draw from his pipe, gives a deep sigh as he exhales a thick cloud of smoke. Finally, he regains his composure and continues on in a more normal tone. I have nothing else to say. In that case, let this story become a good memory of how we cheated death itself. That's fun. Alrighty. So, back to some crusading business, because I think beside that, that's it. But I think it was a very wholesome and nice ending to his quest. It was surprisingly sweet of him. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, crusading business and then off to Threshold. Darkness. Oh well. The darkness of a floating crescent. Run. Ah, funny enough that here. Ah, I just can't. I just. I can't just move this uh, window to markers. I think before the patch I could move it around freely. I think. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. 
Oh uh, yeah, remember finding out that a whole demon access to Valerian is just underneath Dresden? Fun times. <laughs> 